celebrate. We've got Lola here to help us start off the stream. We got a, a few new things on the screen in front of you. I opened up uh, a Patreon account this week and I'm very humbled to already have uh, 10 people come in and support me. Um, I don't I don't know what to say. That's like already well above my expectations for you know what what people would do. So totally confidence inspiring and you know motivates me that people are are that psyched in what I'm doing. So uh, look, looking forward to bringing you guys some more content and uh, really just targeting a new camera at this point so I can make uh, the disc review videos I really want. And down in the other corner, I put the price of that camera that I'm after. And, you know, uh, I'm putting uh, kind of like mental tricks, but I'm taking my ad revenue from YouTube and and putting it down there. And then also whatever Patreon or, you know, committing, uh, I'm also putting in there. It doesn't take into account all the money I spend on discs and bags and, you know, all the other equipment I've bought and stuff. But Miss Putts, you just signed up. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I put a little little scroll in the corner for the 10 people I have already. Uh, I don't know if they want that or or not, but... I thought it was a fun little way to show some appreciation at least. So we've got a uh, a box of hurricanes here. I opened a bunch before and pretty quickly narrowed down my favorites to just the these two swirly Proline Flex 2020 Tour Series Shasta Chris. Hurricanes. It's quite quite the mouthful to get out. Uh, in particular, the 2020 is a little bit flatter, and they just bomb right right off of the gate. Um, they fly in like a my you know when I pick out like handpick understable destroyers and then beat them in a little bit this is what they're flying like. And I, um, a local player, Alex Covey, he's uh, got some association with DGA. I don't know if he's sponsored or team member or something like that, but he's definitely throwing a bunch of DGA. And I got to play with him recently. Uh, he, he has a, a twin of this. It's just like slightly different color, but it's also a 2020. And I gave him mine to throw, and then he gave me his. And we threw them back to back, and and they just bomb. And then the 2019 have more dome and are a chunk more stable. But this is you know a small sample size. So in here I've got a whole chunk. Um, we'll have five of the 2020s, and then three of the 2019s, and we'll get to see we'll get to see uh, if there's a bunch of variation or if you really can just get that consistently. Um, let me read through chat here. I stopped paying attention as I right as I went live. Okay, Sep and yeah, we're talking about hurricane stuff. Got it, got it. Yeah, Sep, the combo of these two is great. Because they do, they pair up so well. Yeah, ex exactly, exactly, Sep. The 2020 and 2019 pair up so well. And this plastic, like, just can't be beat. There's, you know, it's, it's pretty, pretty soft. Uh, I, I just, I love, I love the feel of this. It's like not all ESP from Discraft is that good, but. Oh yeah, I just got another Patreon for five bucks. That's got to be, that's got to be yours, Miss Putt. Thanks so much. That's that's awesome. I appreciate it. Antonio's asking if I still buy discs from Disc Baron. I have, like, the last two or three orders have not been through Disc Baron. Um, I forget the last thing I ordered from them, but I wrote Jacob a note, and he didn't respond to me in the order he sent back. I think he's, you know, maybe going through some stuff. I'm pretty sure he shut down his brick-and-mortar shop and is just doing online sales. 
so I'm not I'm not sure just what Jacob is up up to, but uh, he was a great supporter in the past and hooked me up with a bunch of stuff. So, Sep OTB is my personal spot. Yeah, Sep, I've been ordering more and more from OTB, R really just from hanging out in the Disc Golf podcast, uh, listening to that podcast, and then hanging out in the Slack. Um, OTB is one of their sponsors, and that just makes me want to support OTB because it's such a cool community. Sep, it's like a perfect version of Star, 2013 Star or something. Yeah, it does feel like, it does feel like an older... An older version of Star. Ah, oh, thanks, Sep. Appreciate it. Let's crack this box open. See what we got in here. I'm pretty sure I ordered like a variety of colors. I don't want, you know, if I'm like trying to look look for variants, then I don't want to get like all pink discs or something like that. So I think we got we got a variety of colors in here. Oh, we got some stickers. Noise. Ooh, that's sweet. I like the saber tooth fangs. That's badass. I'm into that. Speaking of stickers, check this out. My buddy, I just gave some discs back to him and he hooked me up with this sticker. Look at this thing. This is a fundraiser for Ellen Widboom. These stickers. It's like super glossy reflective. I like a... <laughs> Isn't that awesome? That's such a cool sticker. Antonia is saying the Tour Series plastic for DGA is ESP mixed with Big Z. Okay. Oh, I heard something knocking around in here besides paper. We got hooked up with some nice... OTB pencils. I like it. You know me. I'm the pencil guy. So one of these is in plastic. It's always funny when they... Hard to know why they put different stuff in plastic. Hey, Nicholas, how's it going? Yeah, I... I just buzzed my head. I felt like I needed to, like a trim, you know, spending more time in front of the camera and having to watch my videos as I ed edit them and everything. I'm more self-conscious about my hair than I've probably ever been. I'm like, oh, I just need a little trim. I need to find a, a barber for like the first time in my life and try to figure out a haircut and I can go to him once a month or something. But with the current virus stuff going on, I was just like, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to a barber and this is the best way for me to cut my own hair. It was way worse when I was streaming Twitch daily. Oh yeah, I bet. I didn't know you. I didn't know you stream that much. What did you stream, Nicholas? Or do you still stream? This one's one seventy three, one seventy four. I wouldn't normally order a green, but I was looking for just to get some different different colors. Red stamp on that one. Here's another green one, 170, 172, with the silver foil. Antonio, would you try out other discs from DGA, like their mids, putters, fairways, or other drivers? Yeah, I've actually got, um, my buddy placed an order at Infinite Discs, and he asked if I wanted anything for free shipping, and I got a a bonsai and a hellfire. Those are supposed to be delivered to him today. I'll probably get a hold of them this weekend. And then I've got three mids here, uh, three DGA mids. I just picked these up at Play It Against Sports. I got a trimmer, uh, a quake, and and a rift, um, all in pro line. This rift is like definitely a little bit different plastic, kind of maybe hard to tell with the. Uh, that lighting, but yeah, there you go. You can kind of see through it. It's like soapy is what um, I've heard people call it, but it's definitely like if it's an ESP to Z blend mix, this has more Z in it. Um, it's a little bit kind of see, kind of see through. <clears throat> the squall is sick. Yeah, my buddy lent me a squall I threw uh, with, with these three. The squall was going like unbelievably far um, and 
there's some pretty sick looking tour series ones out now. I might have to grab one of those squalls. Nicholas, I used to stream the worst video games I could find and get my hands on without emulation. <laughs> that sounds fun. Stopped a few years ago, started modding Reddit disc golf. Oh, right on. Hell yeah. The next one in here is, uh, I got a pink with a gold foil, a little bit of like green bleeding through in the back. 170, 72. A purple one, blue stamp, 170, 72. Um, another little bit of a greenish one, but this has got the, the rainbow foil on it. And then on the back, it's got blue, some blue bleeding through, 170, 172. Sep is saying the Tour Series Squalls are more overstable. Oh, okay, interesting. And then this is the last one, kind of a bluish green. More, more green shown on the back for sure, but it shows through a little bit on the flight plate. 173.74. So the two 2019s that I got are both green, and then I got a variety of colors on the other. And then com combined with those two, so we got eight all together. I've already got weights on these. I'm gonna pull weights on the rest of them, on all these new ones real quick. Yeah, I'm all caned up. Should be all the canes I need. 171.5. That was marked 170.72 and it comes in at 171.5. This one is 173-74, and it's at 174.6. This is almost puddle top. It is so flat. This is flatter than the pink one that I have. 170.72, scaled at So what is the DGA Holes group? So was it the DGA Holes group that got you into this venture? Y yeah, pretty much. The rainbow foil looks so nice. Yeah, I really like that. I really like that rainbow. I mean, I've had like a long list of destroyer clones that I wanted to test out like that kind of disc review series that I started. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot on that list. But uh, I had been signed up for like a number of tournaments this year and with doing more YouTube stuff and then I've also had like pretty bad wrist injuries. It's actually flared up super bad right now. I don't think I can throw. But I just kind of made the decision that I was gonna stop playing tournaments. I dropped out of the last couple that I'd signed up for 
and didn't play the rest of the tournaments that I normally would coming out the end of this year and decided to just focus on YouTube stuff. And that suddenly allowed me to change up my bag completely again. Like if I'm playing one tournament a month or something like that, I need to be doing a lot of putting practice and just like narrowing my bag down and only bagging the discs that I need for the next course and practicing with them. And I love trying new plastic. I've tried a lot of different discs and DGA is one of the brands I've, like I hadn't tried anything of theirs and seeing people talk about hurricanes and having no tournaments to practice for, it just kind of makes sense to tr for me to branch out and, and try something different. And the, the plastic just feels, the, this, the Pro Line, Pro Line and Swirly Pro Line feels so good. Big Red, yeah. I was uh, influenced by the bobbing buoy. This year's been a lot of improvement for me and excited to tournament it up next year, assuming the world is in death. Yeah, for sure, Sep. I think we should be good to go next year. At what elevation do you throw when you test discs, Miss Putts? Um, I'm at like 4,800 feet. Do you think there is a measurable difference in stability from where you live to me at sea level? Yes, massive. There's a huge difference between uh, 5,000 and sea level. Nicholas, I need to find a DGA Facebook group, book group so I can get more squalls. Are there squalls hard to find right now? <laughs> Flame indeed. Flaming dynamic discs. Is that what's going on in here, DGA all day? Sep's not afraid to bob his buoy. I used to work at Gotta Go Throw and finding a squall even there was hard. Really? Well, there's a bunch, uh, tour series squalls just got released. I think there's a bunch of them out there. Alex, you're correct. Discraft molds the discs for a DGA. Okay, let's play the, uh, let's play the parting line height game. That is, yeah, OTB. OTB and Infinite have a lot of squalls. That's kind of what I thought. I thought there was a lot of them out there. What is going on with that? So I've got my 2020, that's the one 2020 up there that I've been throwing. Let's see if these four new ones have different parting line heights or not. That's damn, yeah, <laughs> that's damn close. Holy cow. That was the greenish one with the silver foil. We'll do the uh, rainbow, rainbow foil next. That one might be just the slightest bit taller, 
but that's still extremely close. We'll do purple. Dead, dead on. And we'll do the pink one last. That's so close. Which one is the puddle top? It was the uh, it was the rainbow, the rainbow one. <laughs> yeah, that is some ridiculous consistency. I mean, we'll see for sure when we check the dome on them as well. But for parting line height, like that blows destroyers out of the water. That is better consistency than. This craft is putting into their Zeus's. That's pretty impressive. Like I don't know how to how would how would DGA get better more consistent discs out of Discraft than what Discraft makes. Like does DGA have leverage to uh, slow down Discraft's process when they're cranking DGA discs out? I don't. That would be weird, but it's possible. I will right, we'll look at the 2019. So the 2019 I've been throwing is is this purple one. I'll put it on the left. And then we'll go silver stamp. Does that wing look a little different? The parting line height's dead on. Hey Patrick, how's it going? Ever seen a Dion Arlen 360 drive with a hurricane during his 2015 in the bag with Central Coast? Nope. I've not seen that. DGA Disc Golf in the chat, how's it going? DJ is best confirmed. Uh, not not confirmed, but it is. It's looking good so far. They just put more love into making their discs. That's possible. Sep, my guess is when Discraft makes five thousand Zeus at a time versus like one to two thousand for DGA. It's possible. Hey Matt, how's it going? Happy Thursday. <laughs> Uh, let's put up, let's put up the red, the red foil too. Yeah, you can't tell the difference. That's crazy. Uh, okay, let's pull down, let's check, uh, let's check dome. Let's see what kind of height we got. We'll do we'll do the twenty uh, the twenty nineteens first. I only got three of them, and I've already measured one. Alex, I honestly think this craft strategically doesn't pump out discs to make them more desirable, so they have plenty of time to pump out DGA molds. Yes, yeah, Sep, like one of the big mysteries is like how big are their batches of plastic? Like when they do a mix of plastic, how many discs does that make before they have to make a new mix? Every time they make a new mix of plastic, they're potentially going to affect, like they're going to set differently, possibly. Alex can confirm that that's not it. Their pro line is different, so maybe their mix is better. Yeah, it's quite possibly that, the, you know. I mean, it's really, it's what's happening after it comes out of the mold, right? That's what changes this stuff. So if they're, 
spending a little bit more time in the mold, then it has a chance to set uh, differently before it gets, you know, pulled out and set on a table or whatever to cool. Yeah, Tyler, that, that makes sense. I think that, uh, you know, they're, they're, most manufacturers are probably cranking out stuff as fast as they can. And what I mentioned earlier, like what are the chances that DGA has leverage to ask Discraft to slow down and produce a more consistent product? And I'm guessing probably not much. Like Discraft would just as soon crank out their own stuff because they're behind. Um, but I don't know. I'm just speculating. And I don't expect you to a answer those questions. You've got, you know, not really any reason, any reason to. <laughs> DGA, you are here. Give us the answers. <clears throat> Actually, before I pull the camera, like we saw that the 2019s are super equal to 2019s and the 2020s are super equal to 2020s, but let's put one 2020 next to the 2019 again, just so you can see the difference on that. So I'll put up the one that I, the 2020 I've been throwing, I'll put on the right and the 2019 I've been throwing, I'll leave on the left. So the one on the right flies substantially more understable than the one on the left, but there's still not a like huge difference in parting line height. There is a big difference in dome on them, but it's either a trick of the light there, uh, but it, it really does look to me like the 2020 on the right has a lower parting line height. I'm going to mess with my lighting here for a second because I actually want screenshots of these. And sorry, that camera's crooked. I'll fix it. It's a give and take in terms of whose discs are being molded and when, but it's obvious to us that they put the same love into their runs as ours. I'm not reading that quite clearly, Sep, but uh, I think that the such a small difference in parting line height, the bigger factor is the di the difference in dome. The the taller dome adds a lot of stability. Ward three, thank you. <laughs> I just trimmed the mustache up a little bit today. Got to keep it looking clean. Oh, lose the mustache? Oh, I totally read love the mustache. I'm going to pretend that I read it correctly the first time, Lord. Love love the mustache. <laughs> K 
keep the stash. Yeah. I, I don't easily crumble to peer pressure. I, I kind of do what I want, so. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, I know it doesn't look as pretty, but it'll work better for my the screenshots I'm after. Yeah, see you in a bit, Tyler. Thanks, DGA. Yep, we'll see see you guys in stream. NC Dozer, yeah, you're welcome. I'm glad that helped you, and I'm glad you found some bombs to, bombers to throw. Tyler and DGA are the same person? I don't believe that. Tyler has so many different personalities, I feel like... It'd just be rude to call them all the same person. I just realized I'm going to have to do screenshots different. I, I need to pin them in exactly the same spot to get screenshots for what I want. David, uh, so we did party line height, and the 2019s had, like, just... I couldn't tell the difference. All three of them looked like they had exactly the same party line height, and the same on the 2020s. There was maybe one 2020 that was just slightly different, but their parting line heights so far are just spot on. So the even looking at the 2019 to the 2020, the parting line height is really close. But I think we're going to see a big difference in the dome on them. And that's what I'm just measuring now. I've just done uh, dome height on the first two 2019s. I got 18.4 millimeters and 18.03 millimeters. 
We'll check the dome on the last 2019. That's 18.18, so all three of the 2019s are really close. And then all these all the 2019s or sorry, 2020s we got five of them. They just look, they look super close. This one does stand out a little bit. It actually looks a little bit puddle top, but the other four like r really look the same. The first one, the one I've been throwing, I already measured 15.77. We'll check the puddle top and see. This one is flatter, 14.82. It's almost a full millimeter. Thanks for stopping by, Miss Putts. This one's 15.49 Last one Fifteen point four four. When is the Doth merch coming? Matt, I have probably the first thing we're gonna see is scorecards. Um, my buddy Zach is working on scorecards. Uh, he's got a he's TD for a big tournament coming up, so on being you know patient um, within a month. <laughs> Some Doth branded calipers, probably not.
Hawaiian shirts. Hey, Wyatt, how's it going? Quite, quite possibly. Quite possibly some Hawaiian shirts. So with the uh, parting line height being so close, we're going to sort these. We're going to start sorting these by dome. And we'll keep them separated. So three 2020s. Um, how much do what weight? How many columns do I put in this thing? Let's see, we'll do d dome, weight, and I probably will, I'll put a column in for wing depth. I'm not going to do that live. Hey, Trey, thanks for stopping by. I pre appreciate that. I'm glad you like my videos. Whatever, we'll just do four, four by four. And then that'll be the 2019s. The 2020s, I have five of them. So we'll come down six and over four. Wyatt, the, uh, yeah, I don't have those set up on all of my stuff. I don't know if I'm in, I, I was just kind of messing around. Um, the, uh, on the bottom right, that is the camera and lens that I want. Um, to shoot uh, disc review videos. So I just kind of thought it would be fun to put it up there, at least for today. I don't know if I'll ever pop it back up, but um, show people what their money is going towards. That, what I've put into that, the 195.58, um, that's YouTube ad revenue as I see it come in, and then what my, what Patreons have um, pledged, I'm, I'm putting in there as well. And then uh, I've got 10 Patreons before I started this video, and the I just put their names on there to scroll, uh, just kind of out of ap appreciation for, you know, the people that are believing in what I'm doing and supporting me. Matt, yeah, I actually thought I had Super Chat set up, but apparently, apparently I don't. A spooky disc wither wizard special for Halloween. I like that idea, Mike. Uh, it's quite quite possible. So these are going to be 20, 2019s. Dome. Weight. And I don't know what I'm going to do there. Probably winged... I'll at least start poking wing depth and see if there's difference. I'm not expecting to see difference. <laughs> Alex is on board for the disc wizard as well. So we'll do the understable on top at number one. This is green with a red stamp, and the dome is 18.03 millimeters. I regret my action. Why did that happen? Trey, you are the only person online doing actual specific analytic stats for disc golf. In my opinion, are on a different level of disc reviews. 
Thanks, man. I'm just nerding out super hardcore. I, this stuff is interesting to me. I enjoy working through stuff in this way. Big Red. I, yeah, I've been using Evernote for years. I don't know. Um, like, I know that I, sh like I should just be doing this in Google Sheets, but uh, a lot of times I actually copy stuff over to Google Sheets later. I just like that... Uh, I don't know. I haven't had enough like problems with Evernote to, to really make myself switch to something else. What just happened to my... No shame in Evernote, just not what... Does it do formulas? I don't even know what that means. So, number two. Just green, silver. Where's the dog? She's la laying like right, right behind me. If I rolled my chair backwards fast, I would. She would be mad. Like averaging a section of cells. I don't know. I don't know if they do that. So we've got less than half a millimeter difference in, in dome height on the three 2019s, which is pretty crazy. There's definitely a lot more variation on the 2020s that I have here. But I also just have more 2020s, so that's hard to say. Well, there's something really weird on, I've never seen this before. On this, uh, on the wing of this one that, this pink one. Ooh, how's that for building drama? My camera dies like as soon as I try to get a close up. It doesn't feel that hot. I don't know why it just shut off. I know I've overheated it before. I used to have my light sitting slightly behind it and I think the light was heating it up too much. I've got it set for unlimited runtime and uh, <clears throat> it's plugged into power so it's not running off of batteries. I don't know, it booted right back up. Let's try this again. Right here. Oof, well, how am I going to get this reflection in here? I'm not. I don't think it's going to show up. It says, uh, it's actually got digits in it. It's a one, seven, and an X. Thanks for stopping by, Wyatt.
I'm gonna get a picture of it with my phone. Oh, never mind, it's not actually digits. Look at that. It's just some rent. I don't know what that is. That's on the, uh, that's on the very curve of the wing right here. Funky. Yeah, I've never seen that. I've never seen anything like that before. Anyways. Defects in the mold. Yeah, some, something got in there. It's just weird because it has a, it has a pattern to it. It's not like I've seen hairs get in there before or uh, like a little drip or something, but that's got specific patterns to it. No, just that one. None of the others do. Just that one has it. Okay, so we'll do these by dome as well. 16.21, that's gonna be the tallest. 1577, 1549, call that rainbow or rasta it's not like really rasta close close enough I'm getting all inconsistent with my capitalization now. Camera down. Oh yeah, it's got to be. It must be overheating. Steps back, ready for science.
first we gotta fix our capitalization. That's right. I'm actually gonna end the stream here in just a bit, um, so I'm not gonna worry about my face cam. We'll just leave that. We'll leave that down. What I will do is write in what the difference is. And dome height. So in this one, it's po point three seven. Variation. I need some liquid cooling on that sucker. Yeah, I mean it's just a little GoPro. It shouldn't be shutting off. It should do unlimited runtime. I've had it up for as long as like two and a half hours before without issue, but it dropped after yeah. 50 minutes or something this time. Yeah, the definitely no nowhere clear close to what destroyers are doing not only do destroyers have more variation in dome but they also have massive variation in parting line height and wing shape and the parting line height on these was just cr crazy consistent there was maybe one of these one of these 2020s stood out as just like slightly different uh, parting line height i'll go back and figure out which one it was and see if it's like maybe this one that's got it's the puddle top or this pink gold one that actually has a little bit more dome. But these other three in the middle are super close. Trey, you tell all your friends about the Destroyer video? Oh, thanks. I should remake it. It's kind of long and drawn out, and uh, I definitely have found answers to some of the stuff I was speculating about back then. Some thermal paste not applied well on the GoPro. Yeah, that that could be. I'm not positive it's it's overheating. It's not like it's warm to the touch, but it gets hotter in the so it's just even being in the sun. So I don't know. I'll pop it back on. It'll probably run for a few more minutes. Matt, you're curious about some of the new destroyers? Yeah, I've not been buying new ones. I really like the idea of, in particular, like these Hurricanes, where you can just go buy a disc, and it fits one of those, like, maybe four destroyer slots. Like, destroyers vary so much, you really could break them easily down into three different, you know, stability sections. Um, but maybe even more than that. But even, you know, even at three sections or something, it's be easy to pick, like, this 2020, you know, Tour Series Hurricane would just be perfect for, like, the most understable spot. And you can just buy one of these. Like, as I've shown today, I've got five of them now, and I'm, like, pretty sure that they're all going to fly, like, very, very similar. And then if you want mid-stability, go buy a Zeus. And if you want the most overstable version of a destroyer, um, well, there's all kinds of beefcake stuff you can go buy. Like the Force is probably my my top. That would be my number one to recommend. But it's like, why go luck of the draw buying destroyers um, if you're trying to buy stuff online anyways when you can get more of a sure thing? That's the DGA Discraft quality control, one reason I love them. Yeah, I mean, they're not perfect. They still have some wild stuff out there. Um, look at uh, Onyxes, for example. Like some of the bottom stamp 1060 Onyxes, like it is not an Onyx. It is a completely different disc. It is insane. And for being a 10-speed or 9-speed or whatever it is, like that's pretty much unheard of to have wild variations on a disc at a that's a lower speed like that but somehow discraft managed to really 
really mess that one up. So they're definitely not perfect. The SP Hurricanes are the way more st stable ones. Yeah, the SP or uh, SP Flex or the SB, the special blend. Um, yeah, you definitely could get some Hurricanes to fill the medium spot, like the 2019s, for example, could cover that uh, Zeus spot, at least the one that I've been throwing, it definitely does, and it looks like these two new ones would cover that as well. David, I haven't tried a pipeline yet. Yeah, Hades have some some wild wild differences, a lot more than what we just saw on on these uh, Proline Hurricanes. Yeah, I have to check a pipeline out. I keep seeing that name pop up. Pipelines are a 9.5 Neg 1.1. Oh, f you're saying they're more like that than a 9.502. And 9.502, I'm guessing, is what they're listed as. That sounds fun. Either either way, that sounds like a great a great disc. Trey's saying the only thing I can think of for why a GoPro would cut off when overheating is full memory card firmware problem, or the card you're using isn't fast enough. I'm not using the card though, so I have it hooked to an Elgato Camlink 4K. Um, so uh, I'm just straight. Dump, dumping it over to my PC. So it shouldn't be using the card, it shouldn't be using the battery. Um, but yeah, it definitely could be a firmware problem. David saying maybe the issue is DGA runs are small and Macbeth runs are huge. Don't have the time for adequate quality control. Yeah, it's kind of hard to say. Big Red, my SP pipes are pretty similar, but the PL ones have are very different. Pipelines are slightly different Undertaker. Yeah, so I've been messing a little bit with the uh, CD2, Roaming Thunder. I thought I had it right here in this bag. I was going to pull it out and show it, but it's not there, so... Um, I don't throw a whole lot between seven and nine speed. A lot of times like a Firebird is my only thing in the bag. Something happened recently and like my mids have booted out pretty much all my fairways. So I'm either throwing like a mid or a 12 speed disc for, for the most part, but that might be the courses that I'm playing. You mostly throw seven and nine speeds. There's some like amazing discs in seven to nine speed. And honestly, with discs in that range, I can get really close to what I can do with the 12 speed or faster discs. But the, like the big advantage of throwing seven to nine is controlling how they touch down, right? Like it's one thing to go, you know, 380 or 420 feet or whatever distance and not have to worry about what your disc does at the end. If you're uh, throwing in grass, it's just going to kind of stick where it's at or it's not going to be a big skip. But if you're playing tight woods, it may be way more to your advantage to throw a 40 foot shorter shot, but with a disc that's not going to skip like crazy and that you have better, you know, ground control with. I think that talking about how a disc plays when it hits the ground is one of the things that's most overlooked when discs are reviewed. Um, the one that really stands out to me is a stalker. And uh, P Paige has talked about that a little bit. And some of the times that she's talked about stalkers is how that, the bead on the stalker makes it land like a mid-range does. Like it's it's got that that fairway or control driver flight, but then it just kind of sticks to the ground. Like it doesn't give you a whole bunch of, um, you know, skipping movement when it when it lands. And that's huge if you're playing 
you know, like a lot of dry courses in California and such, where you're just constantly, you're constantly on dirt. Like you get 40, 50 foot skip, so ground play con consistently, and uh, you can shave strokes off your gr game like crazy just for understanding like how important it is to hit the ground at, at a flat angle instead of a skippy angle or whatever. And if you're throwing an overstable disc, even if you're like anting it and then it flexes, it comes down and hits that angle, it's just gonna skip like crazy. How much does plastic type play into ground play? Quite a bit. I think that like most of the time you're really thinking about plastic type and ground play is with a uh, when it comes to approach when you're actually like, trying to stick weird hills and whatnot uh, when the when the basket is in some tough terrain like I think about that the most when I'm playing up at Solitude Mountain Resort and you know there's just crazy elevation changes you're you know on a ski uh, ski run and like it's pretty wild what a like a Nova can do compared with throwing like a, a C-line P2 or something like that. Um, you, you definitely see a huge, a huge difference then in how well they stick to the ground. But for the most part, I'd say it's, it's just baseline plastic versus, you know, top tier plastic. Hey, Littlest, how's it going? Uh, what bag is next? I just loaded all, moved all of my discs out of the commander cooler and put it into this commander I really probably only need to carry the commander for a couple of rounds and then I'll be ready to review it um, I'm not sure I'm actually going to review that one next though I'm I may just go ahead and load up the rebel v4 that I have up there and move that one to the front of the line um, I've also got a what's it called a DD Combat Ranger coming. DD is waiting for the shipment of those, and as soon as as soon as they get in, there's going to be one headed my way. Uh, so, kind of whatever I'm doing will probably get booted, and I'll put that one up to the to the front of the line. But I just totally jacked up my wrist again, and I cannot throw. Um, so, I think I'm going to start throwing left-handed, which I might actually do like some beginner tips video because I am like a complete beginner left-handed. I have all the knowledge for throwing technique and everything, but I have none of the coordination in my left hand. Um, so I might do some like beginner videos on um, just like the, you know, getting started and understanding the very basics. And that would also allow me to just keep playing and get more mileage on these bags I've got so I can keep doing bag reviews even though I can't throw with my right hand right now. It might be like two weeks before I can throw again. Bummer about the wrist. Yeah, it's just like a chronic problem right now. I keep lifting stuff that's way too heavy at work and it just keeps like spraining it. Trey, I only throw Innova Overmold. The Atlas mainly is my go-to mid-range. You bag fa five different Atlases in different stages of stability. Just bagged a new Avatar. Yeah, I've looked at atlases, and uh, I just felt a couple avatars last time I was in played against sports. I haven't thrown either of them, though. Some are domey, some puddle top, some flat. wonder how much variation you would find in overmolds. You should be able to control that stuff better in overmolds. MVP and Axiom definitely do, at least when it comes to parting line height and wing shape. They still do get a lot of variation in dome. Big Red, you've been working on putting lefty. I think I would still putt righty. I would turn into a pitch putt. more. I'd be practicing pitch putting more than spin putting, and I'm a little bit more of a spin putter naturally. Putting with both hands seemed doable. And rip the rip my GoPro. It just That's a bummer. That sucks. I don't want to have to go back to my uh, Logitech C922X. That's the more stable camera I've got, but it just doesn't look nearly as nice. Ugh. I might just have to pull the trigger on that super expensive camera sooner. I can double it and use it as a webcam also.
Alex, I'll never throw anything but my Buzz drone and Comet and mids. That's, a, I mean, yeah, that's really hard to beat that combination. I would, I, I've been playing with the Meteor, and I really love the Meteor. Um, I, I was sold on Comets, and then I started throwing Meteors, and I'm not sure there's room for both of them, but I really like how the Meteor feels in my hand better than a Comet, but uh, it's really hard to beat Discraft on those, on those mids. Big Red settled on Pine Buzz Comet. Yeah. The Pine is a, not quite as beefy as a drone, I believe. I really like the Quake. Um, that's what's potentially replacing the drone for me. Um, I, I, most of what I've been using my drone for is forehand, and the Quake is much more comfortable forehand. Hey, John. How's it going, man? Thanks for stopping by. My GoPro's dying on me, so I've got no face cam right now. Matt is saying, check out Noah from Daily Disc Golf for some inspiration on learning to throw lefty due to injury. Oh, right on. I will. Thanks. Also have a gator for short rollers. Nice. Like cut roller, sort of. Very stable. Justice comes out. I've never thrown a Justice, I don't believe. Or a Gateway Warrior. Buddy switched from a Quake to a Warrior and loves it. Huh. Is that a, like a straight copy of an... Is the Warrior a straight copy of an Innova mold? Oh, the Gator rolls dead straight. Nice. Yeah, if you've got a re reliable, just like straight roller, that's that's awesome. That can be a great scramble advantage. Apparently, premium plastic quakes are in the Justice ballpark of beef. I thought Justices were like insanely overstable. Is that a different DD mold? Boababs are fantastic. That's an that's AGL, isn't it? I talked about the dude at AGL. I thought I had discs coming, but they never showed up. So there's maybe some miscommunication there. I should reach back out to them. I was curious about some of their stuff. Big Red, maybe. I didn't see... I didn't see Nasser say that. If it was in the DGA Holes channel, I probably missed it. I've been too busy at work to keep up with that during the day. I get home and it's like, oh, there's like 400 new messages. I'm like, okay, this is going to take me the next hour to read through. John, I know I'm late, but main takeaways from the hurricane bits. Uh, in super impressed with how consistent the parting line heights are. 2019 to 2019 is just like they are spot on. And it's the same with 2020. There was maybe one 2020 that was slightly different. And then even comparing 2020s to 2019s, there were just slight difference in parting line height. And then the rest of the story you can see on the screen, uh, the 2019s had... 0.37 millimeter variation in the height of the dome and then there's a bigger variation on the of course the larger sample size of 2020s uh, a 1.39 millimeter variation so the takeaway is i'm super impressed with how consistent they are um, they're more consistent than zeus's and zeus's are a whole lot more consistent than destroyers so i mean i've got to get out and throw all these of course this is just like preliminary you know, uh, data, but it really looks like if you want a beat up understable destroyer, you, you buy a 2020 tour series hurricane. If you want that like mid stability destroyer, you buy a Zeus 
or a 2019 Tour Series Hurricane. And then if you want an overstable destroyer, uh, like my go-to is a force. Go buy a force. Destroyer is dead. Nice browser choice. Firefox for life. Yeah, I like Firefox. <laughs> yeah, Destroyer's not dead. It's probably not coming out of my bag. I'll at least keep bagging that one super old 2007, 2008 pre-flight number Star Destroyer. Um, I didn't throw those enigmas, Alex. After I measured them, I gave them all back to my buddy. Uh, Halo Destroyers? Yeah, I've got five Halo Destroyers, I think. Uh, six, maybe. And I was impressed that they were kind of like in the mid-stability range for uh, four Destroyers. I thought that the Halo Destroyers were going to be like super crazy on the overstable end of the spectrum. Um, if, uh, if you're curious, I did do a video where I walked through every single end of a disc that I own one by one and, you know, kind of told stories about the special ones and just showed off the rest. Uh, that's on my Patreon. You can drop as little as $1 to join and you'll get, uh, you'll unlock a few different things. One of them is that uh, video where I go through all my Innova stuff. And you'll be supporting bu uh, buying a new, a new camera for me. I definitely would like to throw the enigmas more. After doing the testing the data, testing those, I was pretty curious to see how they fly. Yeah, I've heard that Halo Shrikes are more overstable as well. They're like in the the they're in the mid middle stability for destroyers. Bottom bottom third maybe. Yeah, these are these are the Halo destroyers I've got. These two are the ones that I've thrown the most. The the yellow one out of the box at 171 grams. Actually, both of these are 171 grams. But the yellow one out of the box was like a like a Zeus for me. It took my beat up Zeus out of the bag, and I could just throw this instead. Thylo Color Go Tour Series are nice. Yeah, I've got a couple of those right here as well. I don't know the, I don't know the years on all of these, but uh, yeah, I got a couple of the Philo Tour series. This one's not Glow, of course. It's just Swirled Star. It's interesting that there seems to be two distinct versions of Halo, and like these four. These four have the wicked, like, you know, sharp, sharp cuts here, all those little spikes and whatnot that are going in. Oops, sorry. These three. And then these other three, the blend line is like very soft and blurry. There's like something going on in those plastic mixes that, you know, these mixed like a little smoother and made them kind of blurry. And then the other ones are, are super sharp. Have you tried Halo Destroyer? Doth pulls out like eight of them. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a sucker. I said I haven't been buying recent Destroyers, and then I forgot. Yeah, I do have a stack of Halos. Philo is the only Tour Series Destroyer I would buy. Yep. Yeah. I'm right there with you, Littlest. Chad, thoughts on Discraft putting the etching on the inside of their rims? I don't like it. Um, if I'm playing when it's wet, and I embrace it, and I appreciate it, but... Otherwise, I am like to put my thumb like top right. I'll hold my disc logo upright. That's like how I just want to grab it. And when there's a logo in the way there, it always like bugs me a little bit and I kind of rotate and it just breaks me out of my pattern just slightly. Alex, I... Do I have any wraiths? I have one Madison Walker Color Glow wraith, I think. I've not thrown race in a long time. Sepia, yeah, I think the Halos feel good as well.
Okay, sec. I'll check my messages. Yeah, I'll, I'll check the messages on Slack. Thanks. Jerome, no, I did not get any overweight destroyers. I agree. That would be interesting to see if they had some weird stuff going on with the parting line height or dome. Chad, yeah, I don't know. It's just like a, a little, you know, mini OCD thing or something. I just tend to grab them in the same spot. Like if I use the same disc a whole lot, then there'll even be like a little dirt spot where my thumb is like polished off and like push the dirt away as I grab it. Hey, Gnome. Oh, you jumped on, uh, got into the Patreon. I appreciate that, man. Thanks so much. Uh, every every dollar is, is pretty huge, man. <laughs> Don't tell anybody about the OnlyFans, though. Don't don't drop that link. That's just between you and me. Alex, you're talking about... Uh, I missed your message earlier about end of a printing money. Is that Was that the one you were talking about? Or Matt said that. Where is it? Oh, yeah, Matt. Is Halo just end of a printing money? Pretty much. I, I'm embarrassed to say I paid as much as, like, 40 bucks each for the, uh, like a bunch of these are X out, so I got them for cheaper, but the ones that actually have the logo on them, I think I paid 40 a piece, which is just ridiculous. I tried to convince myself I was just doing it for science, but it stings. All right, guys, I'm gonna end, I'm gonna end the stream here. I know uh, that DGA stream is starting up in just a few minutes, I believe, so I definitely want to go check that out, hang out and chat. Thanks for stopping by, Gnome. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by. I've seen a bunch of messages pop up on Patreon. I'll, I'll send you guys all messages uh, individually for thanks on that. I, I really appreciate it. That's just huge. I'm, like, humbled that so many people are coming in to support uh, so I'm really excited for what, uh, what we've got coming in the future. So it's, it's going to be awesome. Thanks for being a part of it. We'll catch you guys in the next stream.